Right? You ain't be able to know justice, no peace, your way about this. No. You trip. You trip. Don't say anything around the justice system, we shall overcome it. One day, still worshiping another God. What he means by getting right is abide by their laws. Right. Plain and simple. You can abide by the laws and not be considered joining a part of them. Right. You know, being in allegiance with them, it just means abide by the law. They law say do this, and you got to do it. Yeah, you stop that stuff. You gonna click it? Take off. Right. You know, right. right. Worship they got. Right. 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 Exactly. Like, we trying to keep it from flying through the windshield. Exactly. And think about this: if you see Fairground Park, we trying to drive hanging out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ride the wheel. Don't ride the wheel. Well, you ain't lying, boy. Somebody, somebody just got killed putting their head out of the window of a party bus or something. Yeah, he just put his head out the top and they went over a bridge. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way to go. All the way to go. Yeah. Ain't yeah. no yeah. more party in that bridge. You don't know how to sit down. I'm being stiff now. <laughs> Trying to be seen. Look at me, though. Verse 18. Let's finish this up. Yeah, yeah. And all the vessels of the house of God great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasure of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. We even emptied out our temple, all our gold, all our silver, mm -hmm. everything the most high hooked us up with, our diamonds, our jewels, our bling bling, That's he right. gave all of it. Even the stuff that was on the temple that, that was uh, decked out, give me all that. And he gave, guess what, he went into Babylon with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tight. <laughs> Come on, bro. Verse 19. And they burnt the house of God, and break down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons unto the reign of the kingdom of Persia. So when the next kingdom come about the Babylon is the Persians. It's ancient history. All right, come on, bro. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath, for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. Which is 70 years. The score is 20. Three times 20 is 60. Plus 10 and 7. 70 years. Remember, he dropped Jerusalem in 606 BC. All right? Come on, brother. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. Uh -huh. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, oh. king of Persia, uh -huh. that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom uh -huh. and put it also in writing, saying. He put it in what? Writing. Oh, did it? So, 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 Cyrus actually recorded what he said. Go ahead. Say, mm. thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, mm. all the kingdoms of the earth have the Lord God of heaven given me, mm. and he hath charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, mm. Mm. which is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people. The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. And let him what? Go up. Huh? Go up. This is another nation that the Most High is dealing with. It's like they, like they grabbed it in. Now they say Cyrus put it in the brain, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So if this had never happened, this is all a figment of somebody's imagination. Like they say, the white man wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. There should be no type of lie. And we can't say that the nations have forgotten because about a year and a half, two years ago, they just had a big exhibit in Persia, no Persia, with the Cyrus. With the who? With the who? With the Cyrus. What is this right here? Hundreds of ministers come from all over the world to come see the Cyrus Cylinder about a year and a half ago. This is the Cyrus Cylinder. It says Cyrus put it in the right. Mm -hmm. Let them Jews go back home and build their temple. Mm -hmm. right. Here it is right here. Mm -hmm. It's on display in a British museum. That's okay. it. It's called the Cyrus Silver. 
What do you mean it's not historical when it don't add up? They, what are they doing even finding this? Right. This ain't the Bible. That's supposed to be a myth. Yeah. Right. That's not supposed to be real. Not tangible. Right. <laughs> How about the Lord was prophesying through the Demosphorus prophet Isaiah about Cyrus 150 years before Cyrus was even born? Right. Call him by name, Cyrus. This is a, a color picture. I'm going to pass it around so y'all can see. The Cyrus Cylinder. It says the Cyrus Cylinder inscribed with the famous edict of Cyrus the Great, 538 BC. The Cyrus Cylinder was discovered in 1879 in Nineveh, Iraq. By her mother's resign, it is currently located in the British Museum. Mm -hmm. Cyrus put it in the right, right? We got the artifact. What do you mean there's no proof? Right. Trip off that. I'm gonna pass this around so y'all can see. Y'all both seen that already. Right there, you can pass it on around. Y'all be careful with this some pages kind of loose in there. Uh -huh. that, that's the color copy of it. This is the black and white image of it. It's a little bigger right there. But this is on page, in the Zombie Bible Dictionary, it's on page 193. Cyrus Cylinder. The Cylinder of Cyrus, Cylinder of his capture of Babylon and his liberation of captive peoples. Oh, okay. Okay, got the possession of it. Yeah. Trip off that. But there is no proof is what they're saying. It's not, it doesn't match up with history. And we ain't even got up to when the time Christ walked the earth yet. Mm -hmm. We still 600 years before Christ. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. But it don't match up. All right, well, let's get into this. Da Daniel chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Now, when mm -hmm. Moses was dealing with Daniel the prophet, he gave him the order of the rise and fall of all these nations. Oh, yeah. From the kingdom that he was up under in Babylon, all the way down to the kingdom we're talking about today. The rise and fall. Now what's going on? We're going to go to Daniel chapter 2 first. Y'all pass it on around and get a good look at that. Y'all from Wikipedia, the Cyrus Cylinder, Google it. The same picture going to pop up. Cyrus was actually the king of Persia. He was a historical person. It happened. And when he took down Babylon, he liberated the Jews who was captive in Babylon. And guess what? He said, the Lord God of heaven charged me to do this. That's right. Let them people go and let them handle their business. Right? Let's get to understand. Daniel chapter 2. We're going to read 1 to 13. And then we're going to jump down. For time's sake. Y'all make sure y'all take these good notes. Because uh, people going to tell you all the time. They going to come with that suit saying, there's no proof. And unless you go do your own research, you'll start thinking that. And you look up and you can fell off. That's right. Leaving this madness. The Lord say, bring forth your strong reasons. Try me. Try me. If any scripture y'all remember from the day is that one. Right. Try me. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what it is and what has happened. If any other God, the gods of Egypt, get down like that, I just need to see the rights. Get the all to see. Oh, well, you know, brother Reynolds. No, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Say you like me. Yeah, then you said my book was stolen out of yours. Well, your book should be able to whoop mine. Whoop it to death. Now, the student can't beat the master. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. So, get the flipping. You'll see they just hanging on to a few similar stories. And we're going to explain why they're similar stories. With the Bible, we're going to explain. That way, you can, oh, that's what happened. There's something that happened while it went down like that. Okay. Yes, sir. 20 and 12, and you still have not heard. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Right. Further proof that we are these people. <laughs> Further proof we are these men not hard. Alright, we got Daniel 2. I got a verse up here. We got 1 to 13. And we can jump down to 17 to 29 and 30 number 49. For time's sake, I'm just trying to hit the meat of it. So we can get to understand it. But this is an excellent story right here. Shalom. What's happening? Uh, that should be on the right up. Uh, yes, sir. Um, on this here, this is what they used to write on, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's a cylinder. The papers is inside there. Oh, okay. That's an actual cylinder. Which got his seals and all that on, you know what I'm saying? But it's a cylinder which had the, the, what's called the Edict of Cyrus. It's like, proclamation. It's like, it's like a, a president giving an executive order. Right. Like a president gives executive orders, mm -hmm. that's what he did. He gave an executive order and was like, look, let the people go. 
it's also like sometimes you see in a movie like the, uh, the Renaissance, you know, like when one army's marching to another army, they got a big old thing that holds it up to the ensign in front of them. Or you see like in the Torah, there's those scrolls, you see the Edomites over there, they'll walk around and they'll hold that Torah up, it's just the same thing. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Mm. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. They caught all his witches, his warlocks, his sorcerers. Like, look, he, in order for me to understand what happened spiritually, I need to highlight my spiritual advisors. What is happening, man? I just dreamed this dream. I'm shook. I'm paying y'all this money. Get on here and let me know what this dream is. This was his right. money. Come on, Hebrew. Verse, Verse three. 3. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed the dream. And my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Right. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Sirach. Uh -huh. O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. Like, okay, we can do that. Ain't nothing. Tell us the dream. Okay. We'll interpret it for you. No problem. Right. Right? Come on, Ebro. The king answered and said unto the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. I don't even remember what I dreamed. Oh, it's, gone, it's gone from me. I don't even know. But what am I paying you for? Right? <laughs> dream is gone from me. Come on. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, mm -hmm. and your houses shall be made a dunghill. He's like, look, I don't even know what I just dreamt. If you don't tell me what I dream and interpret that for me, all y'all get chopped in pieces. Mm -hmm. And then your house, your mansion you got, it's going to be made a dunghill. Do do here, who will hear? Come on, he broke up. Verse 6. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, huh? ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Verse 7. Right on the spot. Uh -huh. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his service the dream, and we will show you. Show the interpretation of it. They're like, okay, but the first one's interpreted. You gotta tell us what you was dreaming. Right. Now, what you mean you gonna cut us to pieces if you don't tell? If we don't tell you what you was dreaming and interpret it for you, do you at least tell us so we can interpret it? Well, they fill out that application. Yeah. Y'all yeah. said y'all could do all this. Y'all right. the Lord did with y'all. Y'all magicians, warlocks. Right. Right. Sorcerers. Come on, bro. Verse eight. The king answered and said. I know of certainty that ye would gain the time. Look at you, y'all trying to buy y'all some time. <laughs> That's what you're trying to do. Because you already right. ordered them now. You can cut the pieces. Right. You don't tell me what my dream is. All right? This must have been some crazy dream. Right. Maybe to be on this. Yeah, for sure. Come on, Ebro. Because ye see the thing is gone from me. Mm. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. <laughs> for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Mm. Till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. Right up. Now you gonna make you up an interpretation. If right. I tell you what I dreamt, you're gonna make something up and make it sound good. Right. Right. Let me know what it is. Right? Come on, in verse 10. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Mm. Therefore, there is no king. There is no king. Lord, nor ruler that asks such a thing at any magician <laughs> or astrologer or Chaldean. Like, man, you ask something don't nobody ask. Mm -hmm. All right? Come on, Hebrew. And it is a rare thing that the king required. There is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. They put it on their little pagan gods. Yeah. Yeah. False gods. Only the gods can do that. Mm -hmm. Right? Come on, Hebrew. For this cause the king was angry and very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. All the who? The wise men of Babylon. Come on. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. Mm. And they sought Daniel and his <laughs> fellows to be slain. See that? Come on. 
Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guards, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Mm. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Daniel's like, why the king finna kill everybody? What happened? <laughs> What's going on? <clears throat> right? Come on. Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Uh -huh. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Uh -huh. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. That's Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad nigga. <laughs> That's the name the Babylonians gave them. Right? These are the Hebrew names. He's right? like, look, I'm going to go holler at my people. You know, we're going to holler at the most high. We're going to get this done. That's right. All right? Come on, Hebrew. Then they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Right. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, which is a dream. Uh -huh. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Uh -huh. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Uh -huh. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removed, removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Now you talking about the one and only true God. That's right. Living God. Right? Come on, Hebrew. He revealeth the deep and secret things. Mm. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Right? I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee. Uh. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Verse 24. Let's get it. Therefore Daniel went in unto Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. <coughs> he went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Daniel talking about, you know what he's talking about. That's right. He wasn't nervous or nothing. Let's go hide the king. Right. We're going to get this done. Right. All right, come on, Hebrew. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste. Hurry up. Get on in there. He's going to kill everybody. In haste. Go on up in there. Come on. <laughs> and said, Thus unto the king, I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Of who? Of Judah. The captives of Judah. Huh? See, these brothers was enslaved in ancient Babylon. It's like right. you enslaved now. Nah. That's right. All right, got to go holler to Israel like to get the understanding about spiritual things. Same thing, that happened, is like. the same thing that happened with Joseph in yep. Egypt. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Come on. And will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Bel Belteshazzar. They always change our names in our captivity. Yes, Belteshazzar. Right. His name is Daniel, but they renamed him after they got Belteshazzar or Baal. All right, come on, folks. Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen? And the interpretation thereof. Come on, let me say this too. If y'all look back a couple verses, Daniel, before he said, let me make haste, make haste and get me in there before they kill anybody. Right. So even his spirit was was like it was because that bring more people into the most high. Like, right. He could have waited and said, well, let them kill all in the end. I still right. 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 But right. Right. He let them know too to come out of that wickedness mm -hmm. of men right. and right. and warlocks. Right, right, right. 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 Verse 27, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king have demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. Now you're like, why your, why your little witches can't answer? Why what's up with the astrologers and the soothsayers? Why they can't tell you what you dream and interpret? That's right. Come on, brother. Yeah. <laughs> 28. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. 
Thy dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. Notice he just told them, what shall be in the latter days. He started off the class with Isaiah 41. The Lord said, I called down the past, the present, and the future. Yeah. If you really, if God is all knowing, He know the end from the beginning. That's right. Daniel told the told Nebuchadnezzar, the dream you had is about what's gonna happen in the latter days. Right. right? This is what's about to go down. The rise and fall of the nation. Remember, he's in Babylon. Right? right? We've been reading about Babylon first. Alright? Come on, brother. 29. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, what should come to pass. Hereafter, and he that revealeth secrets, make it known to thee what shall come to pass. Mm. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. So Daniel said, oh, but ain't because I'm something special. That's right. Right? Come on. But for their sakes, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, mm. and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Right? 31. Thou, O king, sawest. And behold, a great image. Right. This Im this great image, whose brightness was excellent, uh -huh. stood before thee. Right. And the form thereof was terrible. It was mm -hmm. terrible, right? Yeah. Come on, I this can't image, I can't draw. I'm get the jump. <laughs> for your picture. No, on you. Come on. Yeah. This image's head was a fine gold. The, the head that he that he seen was of gold. His breast and his arms of silver. Mm. His belly and his thighs of brass. His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. What does this mean? He's seeing a, a man's body, right. head of gold, breast of silver, and as you see, the metals are going down. Look at them. They divide them. What are we jumping? I can't draw. I ain't no artist. I'm trying to keep y'all pictures. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, look. Hey, look. Hey, 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 I'm gonna read. Hey, read. What he say about the what's after silver? Uh, brass. 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 <coughs> legs of brass. Iron. 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 Belly. His legs. Clay. His arms Clay. of silver. His belly and his thighs of brass. His oh, legs man. of iron. Mm -hmm. His feet part of iron and part of clay. Right. Thirty-four. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, uh -huh. which smoke. The image upon his head, his feet. His what? His feet. So the stone ain't take the head out, it took the feet out. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Come on. That were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. <laughs> then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away. That no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. <laughs> this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. What does this mean? Head of gold, breast of silver, mm -hmm. belly and thigh of brass, leg of iron, toes of iron and clay. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? We're going to tell the interpretation. 37. Uh -huh. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. Uh -huh. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Mm. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given into thine hand, mm -hmm. and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. Mm. You Thou art this head, art of gold. this head of gold. Babylon, head of gold. Right. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. And what? Inferior so after, to thee. So after Babylon, in history, comes up another kingdom. It took out Babylon, but it said it's going to be inferior to you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to get to that history next. That's Who took out Babylon? Those metals are going down. Who's going down? It's the value as it goes down. Gold, silver, brass, iron, iron mixed with clay. But the head of gold is Babylon. Right? Come on, bro. And another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth. Mm. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, mm. for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all things, all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Mm. 
And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Oh. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, uh -huh. for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So the last kingdom will be a kingdom that's divided. Right. Right? Iron mixed with clay, like like you Democrat Republicans or you right. conservatives and liberals or right. Right. black and white or right. right and wrong or right and left. Yeah. It's divided. And Christ say what? A kingdom divided can't stand. Right. right? We talking about kingdoms here. This is the dream Nebuchadnezzar had about the rise and fall of the kingdoms in world history. Why are we saying the Bible don't match up with world history? That's right. You got some rope? All, all the different religions too. They yeah. mix them yeah. all together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coexist. Right, right. Mm -hmm. All 42. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong mm -hmm. and partly broken. Mm -hmm. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with the murmuring clay, mm -hmm. they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Oh. But they shall not cleave one to another. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Then you know it's constant division within this last kingdom we're talking about. Right. Division. Won't nothing get along, won't nothing go right. Alright? Come on, Hebrew. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom uh. which shall never be destroyed. Uh. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Oh. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So that stone that took the feet off? Represents Christ coming and establishing his kingdom here on this earth. Right after this last kingdom drop. Right after this last kingdom drop. That's why he hit him on the feet. He got to take that out. All these other kingdoms drop. That's the last one. Come on. 45. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain. And the dream is and what? It's certain. Certain. Come on. And the interpretation thereof, sure. Uh -huh. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face. He did what? He fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. Uh -huh. The king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods mm -hmm. and a Lord of kings mm -hmm. and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldest reveal this secret. Mm -hmm. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon mm -hmm. and chief of the governors <laughs> over all the wise men of Babylon. Hey, Daniel on up. Well, your God is God. Hey, man, look, I'm going to elevate him. This is my boy right here. Right. He all good with me. Right. 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 He told he ain't only interpreted my dream. He told me what I dreamt. Right. Nebuchadnezzar recognized the calling for righteous. He got on his face. Right. The king of the uh, country that got you in captivity got on his face before you. He was like, man, your God is God. Come on, all right? Come on, brother. The daddy requested of the king. And he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro, and a bad Negro, <laughs> of the primitive province of Babylon. But Daniel <laughs> sat in the gate of Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. It's Abed Nego. That's it. All right, we're going to get some more history real quick. Then we're going to get back into Daniel, because Daniel runs through all of them, right? Huh? Oh, wait. That's like. That's like Satan making his body like Christ has his body. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. It's just an image of it. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, it's mimicking. Because yeah. Christ's body, Christ is the head, and we are the members of his body, which mm -hmm. make up the church. You feel me? Satan's kingdom set up the same way. He's mimicking. Right. He's mimicking what he is. Okay, the dream. This is in the, the Apocrypha, which is part of the 1611 King James Bible. Right? 14 extra books going into the Greek occupation. Of our people. That's why we all Q dogs now and all that shit and all that. Man. Started back and just started back. We under some BC. And to this day, they bros think they Greeks. To this day. That's right. Right? Yeah. Calling themselves alphas and capitals and all that. But it went down back and hurt. So it's nothing new about the sun. This is about dreams. This is uh, Ecclesiastic, it's chapter 34. You said 1 through 6, 1 through 6. 
One through six. The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false, mm. and dreams lift up fools. Mm. Whoso regardeth dreams is like him that catcheth at a shadow and followeth after the wind. The vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another, even as the likeness of a face to a face. Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? Mm -hmm. And from that which and from that thing which is false, what truth can come? Divinations and soothsayings and dreams are vain, and the heart fancies as a woman's heart in travail. If they be not sent from the most high in thy visitation, set not thy heart upon them. For dreams have deceived men. And they have failed that put their trust in them. I have a dream. <laughs> I have a dream today. What a dream today. <laughs> right, let's get some more history real quick, y'all. And then uh, we're going to get back into this next kingdom that's inferior to Babylon. It's coming to take Babylon. Right, right, right. And then we're going to pull, you know, the resources to see that this empire actually exists. This is a picture history of Jewish civilization. And you probably wouldn't even read if you seen the picture on the front. That's right. But you should get into this stuff because uh, anytime you're talking about ancient Jews or ancient Israelites, they talk about you. The Hebrews are the biblical period. Found in Egypt. Who, what, who, who did they call Rome in that book? Uh, uh, Esau. Well, well, I'm telling you, what did they, what was the name? Edom Rome. Edom Rome. That's on page 94 in there. I do. Showing you this Rome and the Edomites. Yeah. These, this is Hebrews in the biblical period in Egypt. And it's an Israelite prison. But well, check this out right here. What's that book? This is called. Right, turn it up. Picture history of Jewish civilization. Picture history of Jewish civilization. And they're saying Jewish because they see an Israelite culture. That's right. We are not Jewish folk. We are the Jews. Page forty-one. Check this out. This ain't the Bible. Remember that. They say you can't prove it in history. Well, how about we go ahead and get the proof? All right, brother, can you read all the highlighted areas for me? Right there. What's this next king that's about to take down Babylon? The Lord said he's going to punish the king of Babylon. After you serve him seven years, I'm going to take him out. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's get to understand. Liberation was not long in coming. Mm. About half a century after the destruction of Jerusalem, the Babylonian Empire was supplemented by the kingdom of the Medes. The Medes. The Medes and the Persians. And the Persians, that's Iran today. Iran back by all they look, conglomerate nations, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Russia, all that. The Median Persian Empire. Come on, Hebrew. On becoming the new ruler of, ancient, of the ancient world, uh -huh. Cyrus, king of Persia, gave permission to, to any of the Judean exiles uh -huh. who who so wished to return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. We read that the Cyrus cylinder was about. Get right. permission. Go on home and rebuild your temple. This should not exist if this ain't history. <coughs> right? Come on, come on, go. Whosoever there is among you of all his people, his God be with him. Hmm. Let him go up to Jerusalem and build the house of the Lord. Right the God of Israel. Hmm. Cyrus pro Sirius's proclamation sent a wave of jubilation throughout the villages of the exiles. Mm. More than 40,000 people answered the call of the Persians, mm. king, the Persian king, and set out on the long, harrowing journey to Jerusalem. There was apparently half of the exiles, that was apparently half of the exiles. Of those remaining behind, some had become assimilated among the local population, and the rest had, had struck root in their new homes. But in any case, those who stayed in Babylonia helped the Jews leaving for Jerusalem, and many of them came to Judea later on. Let's end that. All right, let's get to this. All right, I got, I got a witness today. Go ahead, bro. This is the apocrypha. This is the... Uh, first book of Ezra, second chapter. Verse 1 say, In the first year of, of Cyrus, king of Persians, that the word of the Lord might be accomplished, that he had promised by the mouth of Jeremiah. 
the Lord raised up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, mm. and he had made proclamation through all his kingdom and also by writings, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of the Persians, mm. the Lord of Israel, the most high Lord, <laughs> had made me king of the whole world. This ain't an Israelite talk. This is a Persian talk. He said the most high God. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. God. He gave me an order to go ahead and take this on down. This only to that movie 300. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, verse four. And commanded me to build him a house in, at Jerusalem in Jerusalem. If therefore there be any of you that are of his people, let the Lord, let the Lord, even his Lord, be with them, and let him go up to Jerusalem that is in Judea and build the house of the Lord of Israel. For he is the Lord that dwelleth in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Whosoever then dwell in the places about, let him help him. Those I say that are his neighbors with gold and with silver. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a second witness to show that that, that, that uh, went on. No doubt, grab, grab Ezra for me. Ezra chapter one, one to four. That's the next place we're going. Daniel, we're going to read out of this uh, Flavius Josephus, the Israelite historian. Right. Uh, Antiquity of Jews, Book 11, Chapter 1. Where'd you stop at? I stopped at uh, verse 7. Okay, read out of the book of uh, Josephus, Book 11, Chapter 1. In the first year of the reign of Cyrus, which was the 17th. The what? Was the 17th. The 17th of what? From the day that our people were removed out of their own land. 17th. 70th, I'm sorry. From the seventh was the seventh year from the day our people were removed out of their own land into Babylon. See, Babylon prophesied to be in captivity in Babylon 70 years. That's right. Mm -hmm. Cyrus took over to the day it was 70 years. To the day it was 70 years since we uh, Nebuchadnezzar took down Babylon. I mean, took down Jerusalem in 606 BC. You take off 70, that's when uh, Cyrus rose up. That's 536 BC. 70 years exactly. 70 years exactly. 606 BC to 536 BC is 70 years. To the left. Oh, wait a minute. Like that one with uh, we tried to go back and they wouldn't let us go back yeah, in. Right? Yeah. But like they started hindering us after that. Yeah. Right. There was many decrees that when he gave one and then the kings after him gave some more too. More to be like, look, y'all keep quit messing with them. You know what I'm saying? Let them do their thing. You know what I'm saying? He put the decree out in 536 BC. As soon as he took over, he said, let them go home. God gave me order to right. let them go home. Man, All right, go ahead. God commiserated the captivity and calamity of these poor people, mm. according as he had foretold to them by Jeremiah the prophet. Oh, we read Jeremiah. Jeremiah 25. We kicked it off, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah said they were going to be in captivity 70 years. Come on, Hebrew. Before the destruction of the city, mm. and after they had served Nebuchadnezzar and his posterity, and after they had undergone that servitude 70 years, mm. he would restore them again to the land of their father, mm. and they should build their temple mm. and enjoy their ancient prosperity. Mm -hmm. And these things God did afford them. For he stirred up the mind of Cyrus mm. and made him write this throughout all Asia. He made him write it. He put it in writing. We got the artifact. The Lord put it on to do this. And it was prophesied to happen. Come on, you boy. Thus said Cyrus the king, since God Almighty has appointed me to be king of the habitable earth, I believe that he is God, which the nation of the Israelites worship. Mm. Why not? For indeed he foretold my name by the prophets, and that I should build him a house at Jerusalem in the country of Judea. Now check this out. 536 B.C. Cyrus, right? Jeremiah lived in 740 B.C. 200 years earlier. Alright? Now we got to go find where Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus. Si called him by name. That's right. Before he was even born. Before his granddaddy was even born. Cyrus is going to take over and do the will of the Most High. That's prophecy. I told you before what happened. So when it comes to pass, you believe. All right, come on. This was known to Cyrus by his reading the book which Isaiah left behind <laughs> him of his prophecy. <laughs> For this prophet said that God had spoken thus to him mm. in a secret vision. Mm -hmm. 
My will is that Cyrus, whom I have appointed to be king over many great nations, send back my people to their own land and build my temple. Mm. This was foretold by Isaiah 140 years before the temple was demolished. <laughs> before Nebuchadnezzar even came through Jerusalem and sacked it. 140 years before the temple was even demolished, it was already written down in the scroll of Isaiah, Cyrus the Persian was going to take down Babylon. And he ain't even born yet. That's right. What God you dealing with? Ooh. Come on, he broke. Accordingly, when Cyrus read this, he admired the divine power. Ooh, you see that? He acknowledged that that's God right there. He reading about himself in the scroll and was like, oh, oh, that's me. That's <laughs> Come on, he broke. An earnest desire and ambition seized upon him to fulfill what was so rich. Mm. So he called for the most eminent Jews that were in Babylon mm. and said to them that he gave them leave to go back to their own country mm. and to rebuild their city, Jerusalem, and the temple of God, mm. for that he would be their assistant and that he would write to the rulers and governors that were in the neighborhood of that country of Judea and that they should contribute to them gold and silver for the building of the temple. Give them their gold, give them their silver back, give all that back. They need them to build their temple. Right, come on, And besides that, beasts for their sacrifices. Flat out. You right. seen that prophecy, like you said, that he was like, whoa, this is me. This they, is me. He even got the name right. Right. He got the name right. I mean, think about that, man. Something was written down before you was even born, called you out by name to the letter, and said what you was going to be doing. Yep. And you read that letter, blow your mouth. Come on, man. Stop that. Right. That made me most serious about doing the new process. Come on, man. These got to be God's people. Isaiah would have to be a prophet of the Most High to talk about this 140 years before the destruction of the temple. That's major, man. But what's also major about this is because the Most High puts his power down like that. A lot of nations will try to change their name from a biblical perspective, but it ain't going to change the property. You can change all the name you want. You can call yourself this, but the Most High call you that, and you're going to fulfill that role. Will I not? All right, y'all, we're going to Daniel chapter 5 next, and then we got Ezra after that. Daniel chapter 5. We got to go read about when Babylon drops. The actual what happened, Daniel 5, 1 through 14, and then 17 through 31. I'm just trying to, y'all read them whole chapters. I'm just trying to, for time's sake, we got a whole bunch of stuff we're trying to hit. That Isaiah 45 is where he said, where he talked about Cyrus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where are you going to Daniel? Daniel, you're going to Daniel 5 first, and then Ezra, Ezra 1 and 1 through 4. It's Cyrus again. Let me be known. What you just read, that you just read here, Cyrus in the Bible say the same thing. That's right. We're proving that the Bible is a historical book. It is not no, no uh, fable that a bunch of rogue people just put together and use to control you. No, it's, it's, it's prophetic, it's historical. These things happen, these things are happening. And they're going to happen. All right? Daniel, chapter 5. Let's start at 1, 1 through 14. What happened when Babylon failed? Daniel chapter 5 and 1. Belshazzar, the king made a great feast. This is Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. Belshazzar, come on, Nebuchadnezzar. The king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords mm. and drank wine before the thousands. Mm. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels mm -hmm. which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple mm -hmm. which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink their oh, it's a, it's a bowl cat here. He's not only the king. He might go right. get the best that was in the temple of God right. Right. And, and have a feast to his gods with. Right. Right. This is bold. This is serious right here. Concubines and all. He's going to eat. He's drunk and all that shit's going on and all that. Come on, Hebrew. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Then they brought the golden vessels that they were that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, mm -hmm. which was at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank, drank in them. Mm -hmm. They drank wine. 
and praised the God of gold, the, the gods, gods of gold, of gold. Yeah. and silver, and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Blasphemy. <laughs> you drinking out the vessels of the Lord and praising these false gods? Right. Throwing you a little feast? Right. Oh, okay, come on. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. Oh, and wrote over against the candlestick. <laughs> the menorah. The candlestick, they took that too, which was made of pure gold. Uh -huh. Come on. Upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Uh -huh. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the, the king, the, the king shook. Just think about a hand popping up out of the floor. Just and just, just, just right here. The hand just popped up and got the right. Right here, right here. This happened for a reason, right? Come on, he wrote Verse 6. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smote one against another. Real quick, this is the king of Babylon. Right. Uh -huh. He so shook, he done got crippled almost. Yeah. Right? Come on, bro. He's not. Right. Yeah. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologer. Here you go again. Now this is grandson. He said his father, but they really were talking grandfather. They'll say father, like Jacob would have called Abraham his father. That's right. You know that was his grandfather. So mm -hmm. guess what? He's like, man, call in the magician. Call everybody. <laughs> What's going on here? When everything get tough, they call in their spiritual advisors. That's right. I can't explain this. What's going on? They do it even today. Right. What's in this cup? Yeah. <laughs> Come on in, bro. Verse 7, the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet mm. and have a chain of gold about his neck mm. and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So he's going to hook you up. Y'all got to tell me what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, big duke. I got you. Right. 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 Come on, man. <laughs> Verse 8. Then came in all the king's wise men, mm. but they could not read the writing mm. Nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. I wonder what language this was. Right. Did nobody read it? Right. <laughs> Come on, he did. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, mm -hmm. and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Astonished. Were astonished. Come on, he did. Now, when, I mean, I'm tripping. Now, the queen, by reason of the words of the king, and his lords came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. Mm. There is a man in the kingdom, in whom, it, in whom is the spirit of the holy God. Hey, they was worshiping all these false gods. Right? Come on, bro. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. We just read about who this man is. Right. Read in Daniel chapter 2. Right? So she like, look, put somebody back back in the day. But Daniel probably an old man by now. That's right. somebody back in the day that straight straight your father out. Yeah. When he had a dream. Right. You hear me? We need to go holler at him. We need to holler. Can't nobody right. read this. I know somebody that can read this. Let's right. go holler at Let's go holler at the Israelite. Right. Right. Gotta go holler at him. Come on, he broke me. Verse 12. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences. <laughs> and dissolving of doubts were found in the same day, whom the king named Belshazzar, Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Come on. 
Verse 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that art thou that daddy? That daddy. Well, I heard about you. Come on. Which art of the children of the captivity of Judah? Uh, Judah, right? Still in captivity. Still in captivity. <laughs> Come on. Whom the king, my father, brought out of out of Jury. Uh -huh. I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Uh -huh. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Mm. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. Mm -hmm. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, Thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, uh -huh. and have a chain of gold about thy name, <laughs> and wow. shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. I'm gonna hook you up, even though his father had already hooked Daniel up. Right. By the time he, but by the time uh, his grandson take over, they demote Daniel. We don't even need you no more. Right. He was already third ruler in the king. Right. Right. But he got demoted. Like, yeah, okay. Right. What else? Uh, there's another example of reading and not and reading over stuff. I broke back and got the word Jewry for uh, uh, edification and understanding for us all. The Jewish people as a group to a section of a medieval city inhabited by Jews, i.e. ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto! Jewry. <laughs> 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 Jewelry. Jewelry. And that's not like jewelry. Jewelry. Right. jewelry. And that's right. what they call the, uh, if you look at some other little text, that's what they call where the Jewish people dwell in the country of the city. Yeah. yeah, they call it the ghetto. The ghettos. All right, people, let's get it. That was going to experiment on us. That was going to go experiment on us. Verse 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself. You can keep your gifts. What is it? Boy? Keep your gifts. Right. I'm gonna tell you what to say anyway. I already got a lace. I already got a lace. What you gonna see me in your face? I already got a lace. He's still enjoying that well. I lost that under y'all. That was me. And I was about to look right over there and then right. It was like, no matter what you give me, that's about to come back. You can keep your gifts. I'm going to let you know because you don't need them. <laughs> Come on, you And give thy rewards to another. Give them somebody else. Come on. Yet I will read the writings unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. Right. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. Mm -hmm. And for the majesty that he gave him, all nations and languages trembled and feared before him, mm. whom he would have slew, and whom he would have kept alive, and whom he would have set up, and whom he would, and whom he would he put down. Mm. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. <laughs> and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. Mm. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, mm. and that he appointed over it whomsoever he wished. The Most High put, it, put up the kings and dropped it. He does that. Right. Proverbs 21 and 1 says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as rivers of water and he turns it how you want to turn. That's right. It's the most high when you're done talking. Right. All right. Come on, he broke it. Where you at? 22. 22, yeah. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knowest all this, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they 
have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver, and gold, and of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many tiku of arzim. Uh -huh. This is the interpretation of the thing. This is what it means. Come on. Many. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Oh, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. This is what this writing on the wall means. Y'all heard the proverb saying that writing on the wall. That's where they get this from. All right? Your kingdom is numbered and finished. Your days are numbered. The Babylonian kingdom is about to come to a clash. That's what he's saying. His head of gold is about to drop. Come on, Hebrew. Yep. Uh huh. thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. You're lacking. Mm -hmm. huh? It's not an even balance with you. You're lacking. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Perez, thy kingdom is divided uh -huh. and given to the Medes and the Persians. Oh, so that's the next kingdom coming up. The Median Persian Empire. That would be the silver. Verse Wait, 29, no. then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, <laughs> and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, mm -hmm. that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Didn't Daniel tell him, keep your gifts? I don't want none of that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what they're saying. Because you ain't going to have no kingdom. It pays for nothing. I'll be third of your kingdom in this drop. Right. Kingdom's over. Come on, Hebrew. Verse 30. Uh-huh. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. Slain. That night he lost his life. Come on. And Darius, the Median, uh -huh. took the kingdom being about three scores and two years old. Three scores and two years old. Who was Darius? Bible dictionary. Right. Darius. Darius. Now we've been reading Cyrus took over, so who was Darius? <laughs> Is this a contradiction? What's going on? Let's get it. Darius, page 126. Of the Zonovan Bible Dictionary, Zer Darius, a common name for Medio Persian rulers. Mm -hmm. Darius the Mede, son of Aharius, made governor of Babylon by Cyrus. Mm -hmm. See that? But he seems to have ruled for only a brief time. Trip off that. His appointment was given to him by Cyrus the king. That's right. That night, Babylon fell. Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, and uh, Babylon was transferred over into the Median Persian Empire. That night, you check world history. What kingdom came up after the Babylonians? Persians. The Persians. That's right. That's, and you, can, you can Wikipedia this thing. You can close the Bible, go get you an encyclopedia, and look at that. And it's going to tell you the same thing. Cyrus the Great, film Cyrus Cylinder, took over Babylon, yada, 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 yada. This time, this way, this is what he did. The Bible was backing it up as well. See that? They also talk about, they used then talk about these wars in America. <coughs> Like in Bram Stoker's Dracula, they talk about when, when he first came about, he was one night before he took the Medias and Persians, and they showed him old ancient battles. You know, then he come out of that with all the bloodlust of the battles and become Dracula. Remember, the Lord say, I told you what will happen before it happens, so when it come to pass, you'll believe. Right? He's dealing with Daniel, 600 something BC, and talking about all the world kingdoms is coming. But from Babylon to Persia, we don't give off the rest of the answers till we get there. But it was a kingdom that came up after the Persians. After the Persians, after they dropped, there was another kingdom that came up. Right? Then there was some conglomerate nations that was one of them. Ten toes. Another scripture say ten horns. Alright, Ezra. Ezra 1, 1 through 4, then we're going to take a break and come on back and get into the next kingdom after Persia. Ezra 1. We talk about the Bible don't match up with world history. That's long, y'all. That's long, y'all. Just say that. Y'all, we're going to read a couple more, y'all. Yeah, we're going to read this one right here. We're going to pray for one through four, four verses. Showing you what it is. So you cannot say that the Bible doesn't add up with world history. It actually does. And these things were prophesied before they became the past. Ezra, in the Bible, bring it down. 
Ezra chapter 1. Back about Nehemiah. Right after 2 Chronicles. Right after 2 Chronicles. Right after 2 Chronicles. Going into the end of the Babylonian captivity, into the Persian captivity. And which Cyrus said, let them go. Do y'all think? But a lot of us stayed back too. It was only 40,000 that left in the year of Josephus. That's right. A lot of us stayed back and just had to stay amongst our oppressors. Ezra what? Ezra chapter 1, 1 through 4. Everybody there? Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, mm. that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah <laughs> might be fulfilled. Mm. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, mm. king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom uh -huh. and put it also in right. We showed it. We showed Cyrus Silas. Put That's it right. in the right. Come on, brother. Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven had given me all the kingdoms of the earth and had charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. His God be with him. Notice this other, and that kills the doctrine that can't nobody from another nation serve our God. That's right. Cyrus was not an Israelite. At all. That's right. See that? But he was repping our God. Like, look, they got his God. Let him go. Let him build their temple. They got actually charged me. That's right. Mm -hmm. So let him go. All right, come on, brother. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, mm. and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. Mm. He is the God. <laughs> he is what? He is the God. Now hold on. The Persian, ancient Persian mythology had over 360 gods. That's right. Huh? This is a Persian saying, no, he is the God. Trip off that. Come on. Which bro. is in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him. With silver and with gold. Give them their silver and their gold back. All right. Come on. And with good and with beasts, besides the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. That's it for right there.